how to sew a fabric clips pouch. It's available in two beautiful prints and ideal for storing your fabric clips or all your little sewing notions. Follow me and I'll show you how. Cutting out. Take out the canvas fabric piece from your kit and you'll see that if every piece is labelled, there's a label above the top of each piece. You need to cut around all the pieces and then pin them to the top of the piece. You'll also need to choose one of the labels that you can stitch on the front of your fabric clips pouch. So cut around the outlines and then you will have all these pieces. You'll have the front outer and the back outer. You have the front lining and the back lining. And a zip tab. And you need to choose one of the labels. I'm going to use fabric clips to put on mine. And you'll also need the zip. Adding the label. Choose the label that you want to put on the front of your pouch. I'm putting fabric clips on mine. And it's going to be sewn to the label that's blank on the front. Now I've pressed some Bondaweb paper side up onto the wrong side of the label that I've chosen. You don't have to do this, it just it makes it easier to stick into place. So if you do this, cut around the outer edge. If you're not using Bondaweb, then just cut around the outer edge of the label and you can pin it into place. If you prefer, you could write the name of what you're going to put into the pouch or the recipient of it using a permanent pen in the middle of the rectangle that's printed on the pouch front outer. Or you could embroider it or just choose one of the four fabric labels that we've printed onto the panel. Once you've cut round the outer edge of it, remove the paper backing from the bonder web. If you just make a cross with a pin, then that cuts through the paper so you can easily take it off. Again, if you don't have bonder web, don't worry, just pin it in place. I just find this easier to sew it because it all stays still. So place the label that you've chosen on top, centrally on top of the printed blank label on the pouch front and then press it into place or if you haven't used bonder web, just pin it into place. Now, to hold it securely, you need to stitch it in place. You can use a top stitch by machine or a decorative stitch, or you could stitch it by hand. I used the blanket stitch setting on my machine just because it gave a pretty edge. But once that's done, your label is fully attached. Inserting the zip on the front. So we'll start by inserting the zip on the front outer. Place the front outer right sides up. On the left hand side at the top edge, measure three quarters of an inch in from the left hand side and mark this. I'm using an erasable pen, you could use a pencil or a pin, but it's easier if you use a pen for this. Now take your zip, you can see the teeth are right sides up, and undo it. So place the zip slider and it needs to be facing right sides down on top of the front outer. Now fold the edge of the zip, the zip tape, upwards and pin it into place so it looks like a triangle so it's at right angles so it's up so the zip is right sides down and you fold the zip tape upwards now place the end of the teeth there'll either be a little plastic or metal end here but it's the end of the teeth need to go on that three quarters of an inch mark just pin it into place matching the top edge of the zip tape to the raw edge holding that fold still in place just move the pin so that you're pinning the fold to the fabric so that the end of the zip is three quarters of an inch from the edge. Now pin the rest of the zip tape along the top, making sure you match the edge of the zip tape to the raw edge of the fabric. The zip is right sides down and pin it all the way along to the end. Now measure and mark on top of the zip tape one inch in from the right hand side of the zip pouch outer. So make a little mark and that's where you're going to stop stitching. One inch in from the end. Now tack it into place all the way the along the top but stop stitching at that one inch mark. Use a longer stitch on your machine and work within the seam allowance. So I tacked it just eighth of an inch in from the edge and it looks like this. So you can see I've tacked it into place and I've stopped stitching on that mark. You don't need to reverse stitch there because it's only a tacking stitch. Now take the front lining and place it right sides down on top so that you're sandwiching the zip between. Make sure that the raw edges on the top and the side match up and pin this lining into place. 
because you've already tacked the zip into place, this is so much easier because nothing will move. Pin it into place at the other end. Obviously, that that furthest end of the zip is loose because we haven't tacked that. But just pin it into place for now. And then making sure the raw edges match up, pin the lining into place. Now, you need to make another couple of measurements. So on the right-hand side, measure one inch in from the edge and make a mark on the lining. And then measure three quarters of an inch in and make a mark. So you've got two marks that are spaced a quarter of an inch apart. And they're stopping and starting points. These are really important, so make sure you measure accurately. Now, using a zip foot, stitch the three layers together, but stop stitching at the first mark and do a reverse stitch or a lock stitch at that point. And then it will look like this. So you've sewn the three together, so there's at front, outer and the lining with the zip between, but you stop stitching at that first mark. Now take the end of the zip and fold it downwards so it's out of the way. You can pin it into place or just hold it. The most important thing is you don't want to stitch through the zip tape at all. Now pin the lining and the outer back together again, making sure the side and the top raw edges match up. If you just put a vertical pin, that will hold it. And then I'm going to put another pin just to make sure it stays in place. Now start stitching from this second mark all the way to the end. Again, quarter of an inch seam allowance. But make sure that as you're stitching, you don't stitch into the zip tape. But you've pulled it out of the way and reverse stitch either end of these two seams. So now you can see there's the second seam and there's a little gap, a quarter of an inch gap, and that allows the end of the zip to run free so that you don't catch it in the stitching. So that's the zip, the front of the zip attached to the front lining and the front outer. Close the zip, and you can see you've got a seam either end, and the zip is loose. And now you're ready for the next stage inserting the zip on the back. Now we're going to do the same thing but the other way round this time. So take the back lining and place that right sides up. We have to do it the opposite way around so the zip's in the right place. Then measure and mark three quarters of an inch in from the left hand side on the right side of this back lining. Now take the zip that you've already inserted on the front pieces. I'm going to undo the zip at this stage. It's just easier for the pinning just to see. So undo it all the way around. Now, with the zip right sides up, fold the end of the tape underneath this time in that little triangle so it's folded under up to the edge of the teeth. So you can see this time the zip is right sides up and I'm folding that triangle underneath. Now, the end of the zip teeth needs to be exactly on that mark that you made three quarters of an inch from the edge. So it's exactly the same as inserting it on the front, but this time we're doing it right sides up on the lining. You'll understand why when you finished it, it just makes it the right way around. Just do the zip up now, just to make sure that the left hand edges and the top edges all match up. I find it easier to pin it into place with the zip open, but it doesn't matter whether it's open or closed. Now lay the top of the zip tape along the top of the lining remember the zip is right sides up and pin it into place so that it matches this is exactly the same process as we did when we inserted it into the front but we're just doing it onto the lining this time and pin it into place all the way along it's just important that you've made sure that the front pieces you've already stitched match up and take your ruler i'm just going to make a little mark on the top of the zip so i can see where the top edge, edge is and mark make a mark one inch inwards from the right hand side then tack the zip into place all the way across the top stopping at that one inch mark remember work the stitches within the seam allowance it will look like this this just makes sure the tacking stitches can't be seen later so you don't have to take them out and i've stopped stitching at that one inch mark and then all the edges line up now take the back outer and place that right sides down on top of the lining so that the zip is sandwiched in between. Make sure the top and the left raw edges match up and pin together. I'm just going to pin it a bit further down. It just helps to keep it lined up. And then pin it together across the top edge, making sure the raw edges match up and you're pinning into the zip as well. 
Pin it at the other end. Just make sure that you're matching up the raw edges with the lining and the outer. This just helps to keep everything straight later on if you make sure all the side raw edges match up. Once you've pinned it at the end, you can then pin it between. And because you tack the zip into place before everything stays still and you're not trying to sew three layers together with everything moving. Now take your tape measure and in the same way as we did with the front piece, measure and mark one inch inwards from the right hand side and then measure three quarters of an inch inwards from the right hand side so that you've got a little quarter of an inch gap. Now sew the three layers together, starting on the left hand side all the way along and stop stitching at the first mark, reverse stitching or lock stitching. And then it will look like this. You've sewn it all together and you've stopped at the first mark. Pull the zip downwards and out of the way. You can either pin it into place or just hold it. It's entirely up to you. And then pin the back lining and the back outer together, making sure the side and the top raw edges match up, just like we did before. I'm going to put a pin at the end and then a pin closer to that first mark, just because when you pull the zip downwards, it sometimes pulls everything out of shape a bit. And then stitch them together, starting at that mark and finishing at the end. Make sure you don't stitch into the zip tape while you're doing this. So there we go, exactly the same as we did with the front. We've now joined the whole zip into place. So close the zip. And then we, to get a nice neat edge, we're going to press the seams open. So turn it over to the wrong side and open up the seam between the lining and the outer. And press it open. If you take the time to press it open now, it's so much easier later when you come to stitching it because everything will be nice and neatly in place. And then turn it round and do exactly the same on the other side. Open up the lining and the outer. Open up the seam and press it open. Now turn it round and we're going to give it a really nice press. So making sure that the linings and the outers are wrong sides facing. The seams that are on the edge, so there's those last little bits of seams, move them so the seam is laying right on the edge, just like this. So just adjust it a bit and then press it. I'm just making sure the raw edges are matching. With your fingers, you can just make sure the seam is right on the edge. You can roll it between your fingers if you find that easier. And then do that at the other end as well. Inserting a zip like this means that you don't have to deal with the zip ends. It makes it a lot easier. And also, by having it the zip extending beyond the pouch, it means that you can access everything inside a lot easier as the zip goes beyond. Now, just for a final pressing finish, press the top so that the seam lays right on the edge. So the outer, so the front outer and the back outer. Pull them out a bit so that the seam that you've sewn it to the zip is lying right on the edge Give that a press as well. And then turn it over and do the same from the lining side. So pull the lining, just smooth it out with your fingers, making sure the seam lays right on the edge and give that a press. And then do it on the other side as well. And that's the zip finished and pressed into place. Now, normally with other styles of pouches, you top stitch either side of the zip. We will do that, but not at the moment. That's done later. So you can see the zip extends beyond the pouch and we're ready now for the next stage. Assembling the pouch. Take the pouch with the zip and open up the zip just halfway. Now fold it so that the outer, the front outer and the back outer are right sides facing and then the two lining pieces are right sides facing as well. And the zip is lying in the middle. Now you need to pin this together all the way around. We'll start on those side seams either side of the zip. To make the match up, it's easier if you make one seam allowance go one way and the other seam allowance go the other way. They nest together better. And then roll one seam on top of the edge of the other and pin them together. It also, by having the seam allowances facing in opposite directions, reduces the bulk. Then do that at the other side. You'll need to tuck the end of the zip inside and out of the way. And making sure that you've got the seams facing the same direction. So the outer are left and the lining are right on this one. Otherwise you'll have a twisted seam. 
Lay those seams on top of each other, nesting them and pin them together. If you have them both all facing the same way, you'll have a lot of fabric, so it just reduces a bit of bulk. So once you've pinned it together at the seams, you can then pin it all the way around. That zip might keep just popping out, but if you pin it and make sure the end of the zip stays inside and don't stitch over it, it just tuck it in. And then I'm pinning it together either end of the lining and the outers. All you have to do is, because the linings and the outers are all the same size, you just need to match up the raw edges. You don't need to pin around the box corners, that's those cut out corner sections, because we'll be boxing those later, so don't pin around those. So this is the outer sections, the front outer and the back outer, I'm pinning along the bottom edge of those. And then pin together up the side of the lining, I'll just pla place another pin in there. It's important that the raw edges match up, so put as many pins as you need to make sure they stay together. And then pin down the other side of the lining, match up the corners first and pin together and then pin between. And then you can make sure everything matches up nicely. Now on the bottom edge of the lining, you need to leave a turning gap because this is where we're going to turn it all right sides out later. So measure and mark. If you mark the centre first and then measure one inch either side of this, then you'll have a two inch gap left that's central. So mark that, you can do that with a pen or a pencil, and then pin together either side of that. Make Again, make sure the raw edges match up. Now sew it together, either side of the turning gap, not round the corner pieces, all the way down the side, making sure those seam allowances stay facing in opposite directions. Along the bottom, again, not round the box corners, up the other side, and then up to the other side of the turning gap, leaving the turning gap unstitched. And it will look like this. So you can see everything's sewn together except the turning gap and the box corners are left unstitched. So to, let's give it a press. Take the bottom edge of the lining where the turning gap is. Press that seam over to one side. And then turn it over and press it over the other side. This just holds the turning gap to the inside. So by pressing it now it's a lot easier to sew it up later. And then... Because you can't press the seams open because of the way it's constructed, just fold the top seam allowance over, doesn't matter which side, and just press it into place. And then do that across the bottom. By doing this now, it just helps to keep the seam allowances, the seams right on the edge when you turn it right sides out later. If you don't press it now, it's harder to get them lying on the edge and also takes longer as well. So just take the time to just fold over the top edge and press it over. Now the pouch outer section is finished. Boxing the corners. By boxing the corners, this will give your pouch some depth. So take one of the outer corners and open it up so that the side seam and the base seam match up exactly. So open it out and then just have a look inside and make sure the side seam and the base seam are sitting exactly on top of each other. You can either do this by rolling them on top of each other or you can push a pin through from one seam to the other to make sure they meet up. Once you're happy that they meet up, pin them together. Then open out the corner so it's fully open. You can see it forms like a straight edge across the top and triangle sides down either side. Press, Flatten it out. You can just press it with your fingers just to make sure there are no creases on either side and then pin it together across the corner. Once you've done that, sew together all the way across the corner. And then it will look like this. And this is one corner boxed. Repeat that to box the other outer corner in the same way. Then box the two lining corners again by opening it out and matching the side seam and the base seam. Pop the zip back inside if it keeps coming out. Just make sure you don't sew through the end of that zip. And then box the other lining corner in the same way. And then your pouch will look like this. So all four corners are boxed which gives the pouch the depth. And there's the turning gap. Now I'm going to show you another little tip. It's not in the instructions, but this will just help to keep everything together. And you don't have to do this, but it holds it together. So take the outer and the lining and follow the seam across with your finger, you can see, and then place them together. 
so that the seams match up. And then pin them together all the way across the top. This just will hold the lining inside. Now sew these together, but within the seam allowance. So just an eighth of an inch in from the edge. This just means the stitching won't be seen. And then it will look like this and you've sewn those two corners together. Repeat that on the other side. So take the outer seam, follow it along with your finger, all the way along to the lining, along the lining seam, and then fold it together. So it looks like a little pasty. Again, match up the seams and pin together. So as long as you follow the seam with your finger so that you make sure that you're sewing the right part to the right part, this is really easy to do. So pin them together. Obviously, you've got, you've got a lot of folded fabric folded, but again, tack together within the seam allowance and it will look like this. So now you've attached the lining to the outer, which means it will stay better inside the bag pouch when it's done. And there's the turning gap. So this section is finished now. Finishing the pouch. Now you've sewn all the pouch, you need to turn it right sides out. You're going to turn it right sides out through the turning gap in the lining. It will come out through there. You obviously just need to do it quite slowly and carefully and just work by pushing the corners of the pouch up through the gap. I tend to just pull out a little bit and then push another piece and pull out a little bit. It will all turn out right sides out, but just don't do it too roughly or you'll split the seam. Just do it gently and one bit at a time and then the whole pouch will be turned right sides out like this. So you need to just undo the zip and you may find that with all the sewing that the end of the zip has popped through to the inside. So just poke that back out because the zip tape needs to be out on the outside of the pouch. So just pop that back through. So you can see everything is nicely boxed and finished. So you just need to sew the turning gap in the lining closed. Now you can either top stitch this by machine or you can slip stitch by hand. Take the edges of the turning gap, which you folded and pressed under earlier, but fold them back under if they've come out at all, and then pin them together. I prefer to slip stitch this by hand only because it's a little turning gap and I want to sit it to stitch sit really nice and flat inside the pouch. So to do this, just take a, a matching thread and a hand sewing needle and thread the needle through one end of the turning gap seam and work two or three stitches on top of each other just to secure the thread and then work a slip stitch or an over sewing stitch just by sewing putting the needle under the fold of the fabric on one side and out through the fabric on the other. This will form small vertical stitches from one side of the turning gap to the other and the long stitches are underneath the folds of the fabric. Because this you want this is a nice flat bottom pouch that you're going to be storing lots of items into, by having a flatter seam by slip stitching, it just looks neater. But if you want to machine top stitch, that's absolutely fine. It just will have a little ridge instead of a flat seam, but it really doesn't matter. And when you get to the end of the seam, just work a few stitches on top of each other to secure the thread. And then cut off the thread. And that's the turning gap closed just trimming the starting end so you can see it's a nice flat seam across the base now turn the whole thing right sides out again and push your fingers inside just to push out those boxed corners and the bottom now we're going to top stitch around the top edge so because you pressed everything earlier it's a lot easier to do now you might find things have moved slightly with all the turning right sides out so you can repress it but then top stitch all the way around the top edge making sure you don't sew into the zip and it will look like this. This just holds the lining and the outer together and gives a nice neat finish as well. And the lining is held inside. So to just finish it off, press along the seams and from the, bot the bottom of the front outer and the back outer and that gives it its pouch shape. So your pouch is finished. The next, all you need to do is add the tab. Adding the zip tab. So take your fabric pouch, now it's all finished, and close the zip. That's really important, make sure the zip is closed. Now lay the zip and the pouch down flat and measure two inches along the zip tape to the right of the right hand seam. So that therefore you're measuring so that the zip extends two inches beyond the end of the right hand seam. And make a little mark and then cut across the zip. 
So it's two inches from the right hand side. I'm just going to re-measure that just to show you. That's just enough so that you can sew a tab on that it will open nicely. Again, make sure your zip is closed before you cut this off. Trim all the way across the end in a straight line across the zip tape through the teeth. Now to secure this, just pop it under your machine and work a few stitches slowly backwards and forwards. That just stops the teeth coming undone. Now we're going to make the zip tab. This just neatens off the end of the zip and adds a, a nice extra little finish. So take the zip tab, you can remove the label. And on the top long edge, you need to turn this over by quarter of an inch to the wrong side. So if you measure half an inch, I do this on my ironing board or mat and just poke the pins in. You can mark it with a pen, but I'm just going to poke some pins in half an inch. So this is along the top long edge. And then fold that over to meet up with the pins and then you've turned it under by exactly a quarter of an inch. I find this is the quickest and easiest and most accurate way to turn something over by a quarter of an inch is if you measure double the distance and then fold it over. So just press that into place to hold it. So this will be the top of the zip tab. Now once that's done, fold it in half widthways so that the folded edge is at the top and matching up those short raw edges and pin it together and then sew it together making sure those folded under edges stay folded under so you stitch over them and then it will look like this just press a little crease because you need to know remember where the center is pop your finger inside and open up those that seam allowance. You can just do this with your fingers. Match up the seam allowance to that crease and then that means that that seam is in the centre of one side. Give it a little press to hold it and then pin it together along the raw edge that's showing there. And then sew together along that raw edge. Once you've done that, it will look like this. Just trim off the corners of the bottom raw edge. This is just to remove the bulk and it will help the corners to stay at right angles. And then turn it, the little pocket, right sides out. Just do this slowly. It's only a little pocket, but if you just push the edges in with your fingers to start with, it will all turn right sides out. And then to make sure that the corners are pushed right into the edges, use a pointed tool. I'm using the turn the stick that comes with my turning tool, but you can use any point turner. Just make sure it's not too sharp and push it in very gently so you don't go through the fabric or the stitches. And then the little zip tab is finished. So roll the seam, the bottom seam, between your fingers so it's nice and flat. And then give it a press at this stage so that you've got a nice, neat little zip tab end. So it's a little pocket to put your zip in. So take your zip and the end that you've cut and sewn across. Slide that into the pocket, making sure that the top of the pocket is at the top of the on the top of the teeth so that the zip will fit really neatly inside. So make sure it's central. I've designed it so the tab is a little bit bigger, but not too much. So make sure it's central and pin it into place, making sure you pin through the front of the zip tab pocket and the back and through the zip. And then top stitch into place all the way around all four sides. And then it will look like this. This secures the end of the zip, but also adds a little bit of decoration. Now your fabric zip pouch is finished, so you can open it all really wide so that it's easy to work from. So if you fill it with um, fabric clips or any other sewing accessories, it's easy to access them and work from. So just fill it up. I'm popping my fabric clips inside here. You can get lots and lots in there and you can keep it by your machine or your sewing table so you can access them and you can use it as a basket. Then close the zip and you can transport them and they're easy to carry.